Hello, this is Jeff Newton with National VA Loans. To contact us at National VA Loans, it's 855-956-4040. Or as always, you can check us out at nationalvaloans.com. And of course, you can always see us at YouTube at youtube.com and just check and search for National VA Loans. Today, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the application checklist and some things you can expect whenever you're working with uh, your mortgage company, you know, especially us with here at Community First National Bank uh, and, and some of the things that we do and, and we'll, we'll ask for. So we'll kind of run through this a little bit and just give you an idea of, of what to expect. Uh, you know, of course, on a VA application, you know, a couple of things that are needed to, to uh, pull certificate of eligibilities and things like that are your copy of your DD-214. Um, it's just a report of your separation. Of course, I'm sure all of our veterans know what a DD-214 is. Now, this isn't always a required document. Um, sometimes we can pull right from the VA website and, and actually go in and get your certificate of eligibility right from there without the DD-214. But on occasion, about 25% of the time, we'll, we'll be required to have that DD-214 in hand so that we can um, put in any of the pertinent information that's that's required for, for the, on the VA to, in order to pull that certificate of eligibility. So just something to, <clears throat> to think about and to make sure that you kind of have available in case we were to ever need it. So um, next, you know, income and assets. You know, this is this varies per loan and, and each loan is always different. Uh, but on a typical VA purchase, you're going to need the last two years of your employer. Um, of course, if that's multiple different jobs. We'll need all the information on all jobs. All W-2s from uh, over the last two years, so uh, right now it'd be from 18 and 19, 2018 and 19. Uh, we need all those two, all those W-2s again. If it's multiple jobs, we need all the W-2s from all the different jobs, um, and then just your last 30 days worth of pay stubs. Um, typically, people get paid, you know, every other week or or twice a month. You know, the first and the 15th, or the 15th and the last day of the month. So. We just need a full 30 days pay stubs. So in this case, it'd just be two. If you get paid weekly, you would probably, or not probably, we would need we would need all four four weeks pay stubs for one one consecutive month. Um, and then bank statements. So if you have if if you're using assets to to qualify, whether it be your checking account, savings account, your 401k, um, any any other retirement IRAs, things like that, you would want to provide any statements that are are you have with those. Um, we have on here the last three months, and you know that's kind of that's that's pretty standard. But anymore, where they're allowing the underwriters or NBA are allowing for last sixty days worth of pay or worth of bank statements or investment accounts, just to show everything on there and and to show that you have the funds that are in the account and their their source and season. Um, of course, along with those is is explanation of the sort and source for the deposits. Now, if you have anything that's, that's being deposited in your checking account, you know, your typical paycheck is, you know, $2,500, $3,000, you know, $1,200 every two weeks. And we see that go into your payment or into your bank account every month. But then all of a sudden you have a, you know, a $3,500 cash deposit or a $2,000 cash deposit or something a little bit larger, more out of the norm from what your actual pay stub is. That is when they're going to ask you for an explanation of that deposit. You know, and and we've had explanations as big as, you know, went to the casino and got lucky, you know, and that happens. And so it you know, doesn't happen to me very often for whatever reason, but it does happen. So, um, you know, we just need to be able to source and, and, and figure out where that the deposit came from. Um, of course, if if you do have a gift or a donor now or that's gifting you money, say for closing costs or for your escrows or, you know, it was just a... Um, you know, a family member wanted to help and, and help you put some money down. We would just need a gift letter, which we can provide um, here at National or here at National VA Loans Community First National Bank. We can um, we can provide those for you, and then of course uh, we just get a copy of the gift check and a copy of the deposit receipt. So pretty simple um, in situations like that. Now, of course, on VA, since they do allow for 100% financing, especially on a purchase, typically you don't need to have the the uh, you won't need a gift, but it does still come into play at times. So there is there is things like that. Uh, okay, so then we get into the property information. Of course, on the application, you're going to make sure to put all the property information. If this is a purchase, we're going to need a signed, fully executed purchase agreement, uh, copy of the legal description and MLS sheet. Those are typically provided by your agent, so not something you you necessarily have to worry about. 
we just like to let you know we we always try to let the veteran know every little detail that's going on because we want you to be you know well versed in this mortgage process because it's probably something you're going to do more than just once um you know if you're selling a current home we'll need a copy of the contract we'll need a copy of the closing disclosure when you actually close it um that's a copy of the settlement statement or the hud one it's now called the closing disclosure. Uh, this is the more typical lingo that you're going to hear from your from your mortgage guy, especially here at Community First National Bank. Um, so we'll get all those items from you. Uh, and then, of course, this is where it gets a little more difficult and a little more um, detailed is when you get into into you know owning a business and if you're self-employed and things like that. We need a little bit more information. We'll need all schedules of tax returns, current year-to-date profit and loss. Um, you know it. You'll want to you'll want to you know you'll want to talk to your your mortgage professional your your uh, mortgage banker about this, but whether it needs to be prepared by an accountant in the year to date profit and loss statement. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. It's a case by case basis, and it depends a lot of of, of how your business is ran, what time of year it is, and things like that. Um, but of course, that's what we're good at here at, at National VA and Community First National Bank. So you just give us a call eight five five nine five six four zero four zero. We can help walk you through all of those different ideas. And, and get you kind of a, a, just a good idea of what you're going to need documentation-wise for a loan. Um, you know, if you're retired, with this, and this, we have this a lot, especially with, you know, VA benefits and things like that. You know, if you're retired, you may have a pension and awards letter that you get uh, that shows how much you get from your retirement yearly. Or if you are on Social Security Disability or in a combination of that with your awards letter from, from your uh, retirement You'll have a Social Security Awards letter that you typically get at the end of every year or the very beginning of the of the current year um, that'll show you, you know, what your what your retirement benefit is or your Social Security benefit is for that year. It'll give you an exact amount. Um, if you're counting child support or any kind of uh, any kind of incomes such as that or alimony, you'll need a copy of a divorce settlement that includes the child support order that shows exactly what your what's being removed every or deducted every month for child support. And then um, you'll also need a, a tip, you typically don't need the 12 months cancel checks because everything is going through, uh, typically goes through the court systems now. So it's, you know, auto deducted from pay. Um, so as long as we have the child support order and we can also show, and this is where the bank statements will come in as well. We can also show two months bank statements of, of that money being deposited into your account. That shows that it's being done and that shows that you're actually getting that income. So. That's one way that we can do it without the 12 months cancel checks. And that's, the, that's a little more typical way nowadays because everything is done electronically. Uh, you know, debts, of course, we're going to pull those on on every loan. We're going to always go in and pull credit report and we're going to check. And, and if there's any anomalies or if there's any credit for late payments or credit inquiries or judgments or collections, we'll need explanation of those. It's not, no, it's not necessarily an explanation of what happened. It's more of an explanation of why it happened and why it won't happen again in the future. If you had late payments on a car payment, you know, uh, two years ago, why did it happen and, and why? what have you done to ensure that it doesn't happen again? You know, simple as, you know, why it happened is, well, likely life got busy and, and you just missed a payment there and things got in the way. Or if you're like us, you've got tons of youth sports stuff you're paying for school and your kids and things like that. And sometimes, sometimes that happens. So <clears throat> you would need to just explain, this is what happened. This is what we've done to set that up to where it doesn't happen again. We put it on auto pay. So when life does get busy, we're not, we don't have the option of missing it because it's automatically being deducted from our bank account. You know, something as simple as that just, just allows the underwriter to understand that you're not, this isn't a habit. This isn't something that happens often. It was an anomaly and, and and we've got it taken care of. So just little things like that. So you can kind of expect that, especially I know that, um, well, I know that it's standard on all loans for to explain any kind of late credit and, and things like that as far as inquiries and everything. So, and if there's new debt, we need to get that added and we can add that to, to the report as well. Um, you know, then there's a few miscellaneous things that we're going to always need. And you'll want to have just available ID, proof of Social Security number, so your Social Security card or your um, or your Social Security card or your passport, a residence address for the past two years. Of course, we, we will cover that in the application, so we'll need that. Um, if you have if you're divorced, we'll need a copy of the divorce decree. And if you happen to not be a U, U.S. citizen, uh, we'll need a copy of the front and back of the green card, which we can we can get no problem at all. And, and we've done those loans in the past. Uh, I want to. I do want to go back and touch on one thing here. Uh, when it comes to 
this income and assets aspect of it. If you are doing a VA interest rate reduction refinance loan, so a VA Earl, these are things that you don't actually have to provide. You won't be providing bank statements. You won't be providing pay stubs or W-2s. What you'll do is you will provide the name and address of your, your of each employer for over the last two years. But other than that, there's no income documentation that's required. So the VA Earl, again, is still one of the the best and easiest loans for, for any of our, our veterans and, and you know, it's it's set up primarily just to help you save money, which which is an awesome deal. So, uh, but that's just kind of an idea of what you can what you can assume that you're going to be asked for. Of course, every loan is different, every every borrower is different, and we all have different financial situations. There may be a, a scenario where, again, like on the VA Earl, you don't have to provide the income, but on a VA purchase, you need to provide income, and you'll need to provide bank statements because you have. Um, you know, you're bringing you're bringing cash to closing on a purchase. Um, you know, on a on a VA cash out loan, there there's you know you'll have to provide a cash out letter. You know, what are you doing with the cash out? Is it are you using it to pay off debt? And it can be something that simple. I'm using it to pay off a little bit of debt. I'm going to do some repairs and updates around my house. Something as simple as that, but it just goes into the file, so it it it, it qualifies everything on the loan. So it just makes it all flow together. Uh, you know, there's always there's always something that, and, and each underwriter can be different, and actually each investor is different. You know, the VA is pretty cut and dry with how they do it, but the investor, of course, has those overlays, and they can they can put those things in, in place to where it requires you to do this, or they require you as as the, the lender to, or as the borrower to provide this because this is the lender we chose to go with, and so they have an, an additional you know thing here or there that they may need. So. Just kind of expect, you know, sometimes you got to expect the unexpected, but uh, if you have a good mortgage specialist like we have here at National VA Loans Community First National Bank, we have some of the best best senior mortgage bankers that I've ever worked with. And these guys really know the business inside and out. They'll be able to guide you the right way and, and collect all that information and all that all those documents up front so that you're not consistently being hounded to, to find new stuff. So. You want to. It always matters who you work with, so you want to make sure you work with someone you feel comfortable with and somebody you know that's going to take good care of you, and and make sure that you understand the process and what's going on. Again, if you guys have any questions at all, reach out to us at eight five five nine five six four zero four zero. We're always happy to answer questions. Of course, you can always check us out online at nationalvaloans.com. And if you if you get a chance and you want to fill out a mortgage application and and have one of our senior mortgage specialists give you a call. You can do that at www.nationalapplynow.com. It's a real simple website. You go in there and you'll actually create your own secure account and you can you can put your information in there and just tell them that National VA Loans was, was your referral partner and we'll make sure that one of our great specialists gets a hold of you soon. Again, that number here is 855-956-4040. Till next time, folks, thank you for your service and God bless.